Hi, my name is Glenn Hasselman. Just making this video for the free accounting software users to show you guys how to import CSV data into free accounting software. So, um, just continuing um, using this organization which I set up for the demo purposes. Um, and um, actually, before I go and do the import, I'll, ha I'll let you um, have a look at the file that I'm about to import. So I just made up this file a moment ago. Um, it looks similar to what you might get if you were importing a bank statement. And I figure that a lot of people want to use this import for bank statements. Although it doesn't need to be. You could have um, a spreadsheet that you've uh, um, got from a different system or a different accounting software that you're now wanting to bring into free accounting software. So, um, things to note about this is that there is a heading row, okay? Um, some CSV files don't have it. The software is expecting it to be there. Um, so make sure you have a heading row. Um, the columns are not important. So when we get to the point of importing this data you'll see that we can select which column is which um, so uh, you might have a lot more columns uh, in this case I've just got three the date the description and the amount so like a bank statement it's not that much information and you're gonna have to try to you know generate the um, account the counterparty um, the tax code and things like that just from this description field so we're trying to go from less data to more data which you know um, is kind of difficult um, anyway the other thing to note is I've only got two lines on this um, uh, import so when you're doing your import for the first time just import one or two lines until you've worked it out because if you import a thousand transactions and you realize there's something wrong with every single one of them, then you need to go and fix a thousand transactions. So work it out with just one or two transactions. Um, I've already saved this, but um, it is important to save it as a CSV file, so I'll just show you how that is done. Um, I'm using LibreOffice, which is um, a free office software that is really pretty excellent. So, um, um, I also use it in the um, custom sales invoice video for the uh, um, hosted businesses. Um, anyway, um, to save this file, you go to Save Has. Actually, it's probably even better just to go to Export um, and then. All right, actually, it is not better to do that because um, that's not giving us the options we need you go to file save as and then um, you've got to pick the type of text CSV okay um, and then save I've already saved it but I'll just save it over the top again all right um, now back to free accounting software we go into the import CSV data worksheet um, and there's no data in there yet uh, there is an option at the top to load a CSV file. Then choose the CSV file. And then it, um, it checks it, and that was pretty quick. Comes back checking complete. Now, um, here we need to sort of match up the columns in the file with fields in the software. So the first one is... Uh, date uh, the date field on the transaction and that's going to come from the date column in the CSV file that's pretty obvious um, the next one is the counterparty so we only we didn't have a column for counterparty in the in the file we only had description so I'm going to match that up with description and in the description there might be some clues as to um, what counterparty it is. Uh, the comment, um, I would think you'd normally carry through the description into the comments so that you've got a record of what was the 
comment on the um, bank statement to um, into the software for the amount um, I'm just linking that to the amount there are two other fields for the amount so sometimes you'll have a file that has a you know a debit column for the amount and a credit column for the amount so the amounts not just in one column with pluses and minuses it's actually split into two columns and that's what the next two fields there are for the account um, it's not really in the file at all um, but I'm just going to match it to description provision um, provision um, and tax code uh, sort of words that I've used interchangeably in places um, so it's more correctly called a provision because it's not necessarily a tax um, but um, I call it a tax code somewhere anyway that's not in the file um, and there are a few other um, fields that I'll just skip over once you've matched that up you can click process file and then it processes it and takes you back to this page now it shows you a few different um, columns uh, I'll do these videos on a kind of narrow screen in the hope that it will um, fit the video will fit on my website easily um, but um, in any case you can sort of see the data there now there is these dots next to the data and it tells you down here that it means it's the values from the import file and um, you need to generate transaction values or edit the transaction so um, if I select the transactions and then there's a button here called generate transaction values for selected import data it'll actually try to take the um, the values of that CSV file and do some smart things to work out what should be the value in the transaction so for example the counterparty um, obviously there's no counterparty called that but I did have a counterparty which was called a customer um, which was a sort of the kind of unimaginative names that I've used there um, so it might be able to match that up um, anyway let's click this button and see okay so it didn't match that up but what it has done is it's um, got um, this transaction here as a cash received um, it's got the date um, the amount um, and um, that's about it so it hasn't really worked out um, the counterparty to put this against or the account it hasn't worked out whether there's tax on this thing or not I mean there's probably like you know software with bank statement feeds and so on that's trying to do clever stuff to work out whether the thing is GST taxable or not but um, really uh, you need to make that decision or you need to at least review it to make sure it's correct um, so in any case um, we need to assign values to these things before we can complete the import um, now um, you can sort these columns so I mentioned this because it, at this stage I've just got two um, transactions here but um, if you have more it's going to be useful to sort this um, to sort this uh, data because you might then be able to apply values to larger chunks of the data in one go so um, 
what I want to do here with this transaction is I want to assign some values to the to the missing fields. So um, transaction type is correct already. Um, or oh, here's this there's this box here down the bottom where it can it says assign values to selected transactions. Um, so for the transaction type, it's correct, so I don't need to select anything. But if it was incorrect, I could change the transaction type by selecting something there. Um, and if you change a transaction type, there is a um, option to reverse the amount. So if you change from cash payment to cash received, um, that can be useful. Now I want to evaluate. I want to assign the cust the, the value of a customer to this transaction. So I select it there, and let's say I want to put it to sales revenue and make it a GST taxable sale. Calculate tax amounts. I'm going to put yes. Okay. So the the file didn't have a tax amount column. Um, your file might have a tax amount column. Or it, it, and even if it doesn't, you could add one and then calculate the tax in the file, in the spreadsheet, and then import that, that value. Um, but what I'm showing you here is that you can actually have the software calculate the tax amount um, in here as well. Then once you've decided what values you want to assign to the selected transactions, and I've just selected one transaction, but you could select hundred of them or whatever um, you click this button apply to selected transactions okay and so there we go it's assigned it to a customer um, sales revenue and it's got the GST tax code and tax amount now you could have a lot of transactions on this page um, and uh, and working be working through them um, and it might be useful to just sort of get rid of the ones you've completed. So what you can do is you can uh, select the ones you've completed and there is this button down here which says post selected import data to ledger. And so that takes the, once you've you know um, completed the transactions, it takes them from here and pushes them into the ledger. So let's click that. Okay, now you would work on the remaining transactions. You can continue to use this assign values to selected transactions um, method, uh, which is good for doing a lot of transactions at once. Um, another way is to double click on this transaction and then um, edit it individually. and then click save import data once you've done that you can go back to the um, import data worksheet and being happy with that transaction you could click this button here post selected import data to ledger okay so now that has um, imported the two transactions you can see that for two transactions, it's a lot more time consuming um, than simply entering the two transactions. But if you have a lot of transactions to import, this can be a lot quicker. Finally, let's go and have a look at um, the data. Okay, here it is in the sales worksheet, um, the customer invoice, and if we go to the purchases worksheet, we've got the, um, the purchase that we imported. Okay, that's the basics of importing data. Um, I hope the video has been useful and thanks for watching.